good morning dear students in the previous class i have taught you about the geographical features of india yes so india geographical features comprise the himalayan mountains and the plains in the north and the deccan plateau and the coastal region in the south and also the uh, snow capped mountains in the north and also include there are so many tallest mountains peaks in the world is yes, that is the mount everest is yes, and uh, k2 that is in india mount everest that is in uh, nepal is yes, and they help to preserve the safety and the security of india is yes, and there have been very few instruction on the ancient india from the northern himalaya region but there are so many attacks have been mainly from the north western side through the valleys of bolan and khyber passes so among them the flat indo gangetic plains are extremely fertile and ancient civilization of indus valley and the vedic period flourished in that region only yes and many battles have been fought from time to time to establish the control over that area so usually the dynasties that established control over this fertile gangetic plains also established empires and the narmada river it separates india into two parts that is the northern the other northern part of the india that is called as malwa plateau and the southern part is uh, india that is known as central highlands uh, sorry a uh, deccan plateau uh, yes and uh, the mauryas and the guptas and so many dynasties ruled this uh, two areas of ancient times and india has also a vast coastline and it stretches over 6100 kilometers the eastern coastline that is called as a koramandal coast and whereas the western coastline is referred as a konkana and malabar coast yes so there are so many ports along with this coastline and they are uh, attracted the romans from time of ancient and from uh, that uh, that ports foreign trade was carried is yes, on that time is yes. as a result as a result ports towns flourished resulting in the rise of powerful kingdoms in south like pandyas and cheras and the cholas so let us see the prehistoric period is yes. is the period before the discovery of the art of writing is called the prehistoric age is yes. the pre historic period is yes, that is the period so there is no writing is yes, the period before the writing that we known as the prehistoric period is yes, and this is so because we do not find evidence of the linguistic development or the use of script is yes, and we do not get any written records for the study of history of this period and then tell me how do we get to know about the people and their life in the prehistoric age yes yes so the scholars who study this period and they are known as archaeologist and in this age man was a nomad and indulged in hunting and food gathering yes so you can observe here yes so his aim is only hunting the animals and gathering the foods only okay so archaeologists have discovered a few tools created and used by this people yes so weapons are used in prehistoric period yes so archaeologists found this types of weapons and probably they used the tools made of stone wood and bones so among them only tools made by stone have survived today yes and it's providing us the sources for study yes because stone and wooden uh, sorry wood and bones are fossil 
yes and human beings in the prehistoric age used stone tools to peel the skin and separate the flesh and bones of animals and also they used scrap the bark of trees and they also used cut cut cutting the fruits and roots yes and the people used to create handles out of bones and wood and using them like a spears and arrows hunt for hunted animals and they used the stone as an axe to chop down trees and cut them into a log says yes. they are used stone axes for chopping down the trees and cutting into the logs so they might have used wood to build build huts for themselves or to make handles for their weapons the word prehistoric period provides this sort of vision to us so let us see where did the prehistoric man live yes so the evidence of the hunting and gathering of food humans are available in bembetka hunaski and karnol yes hunaski that is in karnataka district sorry karnataka state that is yadgir district and uh, bembetka that is in madhya pradesh and one more karnol that is in andhra pradesh so these sites where the people or the evidence of the hunting and food gatherings are available yes and there are many other sites in which uh, such relics have been found and most of these sites have been discovered along the bank of rivers and lakes because there is a, a water yes and furthermore since stone tools were essential for the survival of people of that age they chose areas abundant with the stone which could fulfill their needs yes. so their main aim is hunting and gathering the foods so they chose that type of area where the rocks are available yes because that can fulfill their needs and areas where people used stones to create various tools have been thought to be the first industrial sites of human beings yes and so let us see how do we get to know about such industrial sites yes how can we find where it is the industrial sites yes so usually we get to see stone tools around rocky areas yes and people might have rejected some rocks as unsuitable for their tools yes the people of that time they uh, they create some tools and uh, by the rocks and they make or they gave a shape to that tools and the remaining heaps of broken rocks or stone chips obtained during the creation of implements abound in such areas and it is possible that people lived for a long time in these places and these sites are called residential and industrial sites yes here the people they make some tools from the rocks yes they gave a particular shape to the rocks and make the weapon yes so that area is known as residential or industrial sites okay so let us see uh, knowledge of fire yes they have knowledge of fire yes <coughs> so signs of ashes have been obtained in the caves of karnal yes there are evidence of ashes so they have they have been obtained in the caves of karnal and they reveal the knowledge and the use of fire by the people of the stone age and probably fire was used for various purposes like cooking food and for light and they used to frighten animals okay so let us see drawings found in caves yes so some drawings in many caves in 
which people lived in the stone age yes even today we can see these drawings done on the walls of caves and on rocks yes if you visit it to the caves so there are so many uh, paintings on the walls of caves and rocks yes elephanta caves is a very famous caves yes if you go there you can see that okay uh, such caves drawings can be seen in madhya pradesh and uttar pradesh and karnataka also so there are beautiful drawings of wild animals and hunting yes so let us see next one is the changing environment yes how the how our environment changes let's see so it is believed that 12000 years ago a major change took place in the earth's environment is yes? so before 12000 years ago a change took place in the earth's environment the earth's temperature began to gradually increase is yes? our earth the temperature it gradually increases and this led to the development of grasslands in many places is yes? when the earth's temperature gradually increases so it leads to the development of grassland in many places so therefore birds and animals began to multiply in unprecedented numbers and also animals like deer elk goats sheep and other prospered in this grasslands yes and humans who had been hunting animals he began to observe their nature is and food habits and the way these animals multiplied is in the previous days his aim is only gathering food and hunting animals but in the next is he started or he he started to observing their nature and food habits and their way these animals multiplied as yes. and over a period of time they captured some these animals and brought them up as yes. after some time he started the cattle rearing as yes. and like this animal husbandry and dairying started as yes. and humans had by now learned to catch fish in streams and lakes no human beings noticed in the meat some grasses bearing grains and had grown naturally and they learned to use them as food yes and the grains and cereals like rice white uh, wheat and barley obtained from such plants so gradually they learned to grow them too yes and archaeologists refer to the period we discussed now by different names the age that prevailed 2 million years ago is the oldest age and it is called as the old stone age yes and uh, and it stretched over a period of 12000 years and this long duration has been classified into three stages and they are early middle and late old stone age okay and the period from 12000 years to around 10000 years is called the middle stone age and the tools of this period are generally very small and hence they are called as delicate stone tools is yes? and they used to fix the stone tools with handles made out of wood and bones and they used to tools as axes and saws is yes? along with these tools tools of the old kind too continue to be used Yes, you can observe a diagram showing that the stages of the prehistoric age. That is, first one is old stone age. It has classified into three. That is, early old stone age, middle old stone age, and late old stone age. Next one is middle stone age and new stone age. Yes, the new stone age it began after ten thousand years, and the stone tools of this period are different from those of the earlier period. Yes, and these tools. were bright and had sharp edges and people of this ages used the grinding stones for grinding leaves and herbs and grains and cereals and some parts and tents of this period have been found a few 
of which have been decorated at spots where used for storing grains yes they are using pots for storing the grains and they were also used to cooking rice wheat and other grains and cereals yes and people of this age had learned to weaving cloth also so this is all about prehistoric india and i hope all of you understood it and there is a one interesting uh, video that is related to prehistoric india okay watch that video and thank you friends welcome to new happy learning video today we're going to learn about our prehistory the first thing we need to know is that our prehistory is divided into three different periods paleolithic neolithic and the metal ages the Paleolithic begins with the appearance of the first human beings and ends 8,000 years before Christ. During the Paleolithic period, people were nomads, meaning that they didn't live in one place. No, they were constantly on the move in search of animals to hunt. As they were hunters and gatherers, they needed to follow the animals in order to capture them and at the same time, they collected wild fruits they found on their way. They lived in tribes, in small groups formed by families, and they found refuge in caves where they would paint on the wall. These paintings were done with a mixture of charcoal, earth, animal fat and water. Look, here are a few examples. The truth is, it's absolutely fascinating to think that these first paintings, these first artistic representations, were drawn thousands of years ago, don't you think? Both Paleolithic men and women wore animal skins, which they had hunted previously. And they used tools such as an axe and spears made out of stones, wood and bones, which they themselves carved. With the passing of time, or rather centuries, these first human beings became more and more intelligent and they began to domesticate animals, such as dogs, goats, sheep and pigs. They also began to cultivate plants, which were then eaten. With the arrival of agriculture and farming, Everything changed. Man stopped being a nomad and became sedentary, and the first villages were made. This is when the Paleolithic period ends and the Neolithic begins. The Neolithic started 8 million years before Christ, when we discovered agriculture and farming, and it finished 5,000 years BC with the beginning of the Metal Ages. Men and women in the Neolithic produced food by cultivating the land and domesticating animals. We can say that they were the first farmers and agriculturalists of our history. Better yet, our prehistory. As they had to look after their crops and animals, they constructed small villages and began to settle in them permanently, meaning that they transformed into sedentary, not like the Paleolithic, who were nomads because they were moving constantly. The first Neolithic settlements were situated in very fertile lands, near rivers so they could access water easily, needed for their crops as well as allowing their animals to drink. You know how important water is in our life. The first plants that were cultivated were cereals, such as wheat or pulses like chickpeas. But do you know which were the first animals to be domesticated? Well, it was dogs, sheep, goats, and pigs. During the Neolithic era, many interesting things were invented, such as ceramic and fabric. But the most important invention was the wheel. Everything became so easy for men and women in the Neolithic. 
especially when they started using metals. This is the point where the Neolithic ended and a new era in prehistory commenced, the Metal Ages which commenced approximately 6,500 years BC and finished when the first written language was born. The first metal which was used was copper, then bronze, which is a mixture of copper and tin, and finally iron, which is a much more abundant mineral and therefore easier to find in nature. In order to mould these metals, they were melted at extremely high temperatures and transformed into the desired shape. This is how utensils like tools, weapons and decorations were made. This process is called metallurgy. Through metallurgy, crafts and trade began. The metallurgists were the first specialised craftsmen as the metallurgy is a very complex and difficult task which few knew how to do. The rise of Algarian production and the appearance of crafts caused bartering, that is the exchange of products. This is when trade began. Trade, over time, made some villages grow in size, turning into cities. This then created large commercial and cultural exchange between these new cities and new inventions such as sailboats and wagons used to transport goods were made. Trade also changed society by creating social classes, the rich and the poor, the powerful and the slaves. During the Metal Ages, people began questioning the mysteries of life as well as death and the first religious representations arose. Constructions called megaliths were created with large blocks of stone. Mega, meaning large, and liths, stone. The simplest megalith was the menir, a large stone reverted vertically into the ground. Dolmens were also constructed, such as the ones we see in these images. The Metal Ages ended with the first written language about 4,000 years ago. And with this, prehistory comes to an end. But history commences! Did you find learning about prehistory interesting? Paleolithic, Neolithic and the Metal Ages? We definitely did! Because by getting to know our past, we understand our present and make our future better. Goodbye friends! See you next time and don't forget to subscribe to Happy Learning TV!